पत्रकार एंड दीज आर द हेडलाइंस ऑफ द आवर दीप बसनेट छबी राज पंत राम कुमार सुवेदी एंड शोभा कांत ढकाल कन्विक्टेड इन द ललिता निवास लैंड स्कैम क्लीन चिट गिवन टू फॉर्मर मिनिस्टर्स गक्षदार श्रेष्ठ एंड जोशी The 16th conference of the World Social Forum kicks off in Kathmandu. Climate justice, economic inequality, health, among others, the theme for discussions. India's Supreme Court scraps funding system called the electoral bonds that allowed individuals and companies to donate money to political parties anonymously and without limit. And Namibia defeats Nepal by four wickets under the ICC Cricket World Cup League Two Triangular ODI series. Captain Gerald Erasmus claims five wickets in Namibia's win. The special court has convicted former Fiscal Planning Secretary Deep Basnath and former Secretary for Land Management Chabiraj Pant for their involvement in the Lalita Nivas land scam. Likewise, middlemen Ram Kumar Subedi and Shiva Kanta Thakal, among others, have also been termed guilty by the court. The Joint Bench of Justices of the Special Court, Khushi Prasad Tharu, Ram Bahadur Thapa, and Ritendra Thapa issued the verdict earlier today. The court has also acquitted Kaladhar Deuja and employees of the Department of Land Management, Delhi Bazaar, for transferring government land in the names of the individuals. The court has issued an order to seize the land in the name of 65 individuals. Former Deputy Prime Minister Bijay Kumar Gakshadar, former Minister Dambar Shrestha and Chandra Dev Joshi have been given a clean chit in the Lalita Nivas land scam. The Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority, CIAA, had filed a case against 175 individuals for their alleged involvement in the Lalita Nivas land scam four years ago. The CIAA had filed the case demanding fines from 110 individuals, including four ministers and three former secretaries, and to seize the land in the name of 65 individuals. Cases had been filed against former Deputy Prime Minister Bijay Kumar Gakshadar, former ministers Dambar Bahadur Shrestha, Chandra Dev Joshi, Chabiraj Pantha, and former secretary Dinesh Hari Adhikari. Cases were also filed against former anti-graft body chief Deep Basnath, officers of the Department of Land Management and those who had sold and purchased the government land. Shiva Kanta Thakal and Ram Kumar Subedi, who are considered the mastermind of the land scam and operator of Bhatbatini supermarket chain, Min Bahadur Gurung had been included as defendants in the case. The CIA had deemed it unnecessary to file cases against former ministers Madhav Kumar Nepal, Ram Babu, in fact Babu Ram Bhatrai and CPN UML vice chairperson Vishnu Paudil among others who were alleged of involvement in the embezzlement. The 299 rupees of land purchased by Bhim Samsher in 1988 BS and passed on to his descendants and the palace constructed on the land is popularly known as Lalita Nivas. The land had been transferred by Bhim Samsher in the name of his son Hiranya Samsher. According to the inscription of the Department of Land Management, the land was later transferred in the name of his son Subarna Samsher. However, a large portion of the land was occupied by Lalita Nivas after a new land ceiling was imposed by the government in the fiscal year 2021 BS. It was revealed that the land bordering the Prime Minister's official residence in Balbatar, which was occupied by the government, had been transferred in the name of individuals and organizations illegally by making policy-level decisions during various states. According to the report prepared by the Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority (CIAA), the Lalita Nivas land scam, in fact, the Lalita Nivas land was transferred in the names of individuals by establishing fake tenants. forging documents and providing compensation the government had formed a committee under the leadership of former secretary sharda prasad trital to probe the lalita nivas land scam police and the corruption watchdog ciaa had conducted further investigation based on the report prepared by the committee The investigation had revealed irregularities concerning more than 113 rupees of the lalita nivas land 
The 16th Conference of the World Social Forum organized worldwide with the objective of applying pressure to maintain social and climate justice, human rights, equality, conservation of environment and sustainable peace has begun at Prikuti Mandap in Kathmandu today. The participants at this conference, World Social Forum from different parts of the world, have their own specific issues of interest as well. Well, uh, the World Social Forum brings me here. I've uh, attended uh, many, many of them before, so I always want to go here. Well, it's to bring together the social movements around the world and, uh, and offer the alternative for a new world order, which is uh, people-centered and which is... Uh, providing justice for people on the grassroots level. Well, I, th I think uh, we need tremendously to have a social change and an economic change in our world. And if we don't do that anchored in the on the grassroots level with the social movements, we will fail because the, the big uh, capital interest will, will control it and govern it. We need to be people-centered and community-centered in, in the change which is needed all over the world. I see you're carrying a flag of Palestine yes, as well. So many wrong things happening around the world. How do you think can problems like these be resolved? Well, uh, let's hope first and foremost that uh, that there becomes an end of this uh, crazy bombing in uh, Gaza and the genocide which is going on there. And then people have to, the, the, the parties have to come together and speak about a solution which is based on international law. Unless it's based on international law, we are inviting nations for for anarchy, and Israel has to comply with international law, as all countries have to do. Uh, I think it's about all of us, everybody working together, building bridges and making connections so that we move forward, not just in the way that's like a greedy, capitalistic way, but a, a good, fair society. We work for women's rights, climate justice, land rights. So we are looking on to, you know, uh, just work towards uh, getting more uh, prosperity among our people and work for the unprivileged sections of society in our uh, country. So just like we are working in with pastoralist communities, we are working with women, we are working with children and most uh, of all we have our uh, focus on climate justice and resilience for which we are looking forward and we are trying to meet more and more people so that we can have some kind of innovative practices to be done in our country. Well, some of the participants shared their concerns about the lack of justice, the conditions of war and conflict happening around the world, while many others have been here for, to raise their voices regarding world peace, climate justice, and justice for children, and violation of animal rights as well. I think it's very important we keep uh, meeting each other. We have had a very hard time for the, with the pandemic, you know, the COVID-19, so we kind of stopped meeting together so it's a very good thing we can uh, different delegation come together and you know try to build alternative so much of wrong is happening around the world so for peace what needs to be done from people like you and us well i think we have to fight to make our voices heard uh, much more and we keep we have to keep communicating the way you're doing and other people are trying to do it it's key you know because there is a lot of uh, we can see human rights being very defeated recently and you know it's hard so we have to keep the motivation up yeah it's a, it's an important space because uh, bring the, a lot of uh, movement uh, women movement associations and a different uh, alternative movements uh, beside each other to discuss about their experiences and their knowledge and to exchange their knowledge uh, and also really creating uh, alternative uh, alternative uh, against racism against national nationalism, uh, against, against patriarchy, against fundamentalism. So uh, we actually, we all uh, people here searching for an alternative and we actually fighting and building in the same time the alternative. We are uh, talking about our experiences and learning from the other pe people from their experiences. These bad things, uh, all together we are here, we are not alone. We are a lot of people in the world. We know that we have to change the world. And we, we know that we have to manifest it that uh, another world is possible. With Pasupati Burathoki and Murari Khimire in camera, Praramadahal for Kantipur News.
In our public voice segment, today we have asked the participants of World Social Forum how justice, equality and social transformation can be attained. Let's take a look at what they had to say. विशेष वर्ग को मात्र नए प्रत्येक जाति समुदाय को राज्य को हर एक निकाय में पहुँच भैप समय पैला अलग एजुकेशन को कमी अलग तीत को बुझी रहा थे अलग अब तो अगड़ी बढ़ा का लगी तो हमीर सब भाई पे एजुकेशन तीर नहीं जानूप संविधान में जी जे कुछ लिखे तापनी शासक वर्ग को दृष्टिकोण स्पष्ट हो झेली भेन इसको लगी राज्य ने नहीं पहल कर हमीर आप ठाव क्षेत्र हम तो आवाज उठाई रख् सबले सब सोच सबले सब को समस्या बुझ सबले सब को उपलब्धि सबले सब को प्रगति बुझे हम संभव कसा पखा कसा काखा गुन भेन रही करना आँटी रखे देश में अब साथ दिए देश को विस को लगी देश को निस को लगी अगड़ी बढ़ना सर सरकार ने नहीं हो सहयोग करने पुर्सन पीपल यंग पीपल टू यूनिवर्सिटीज टू स्कूल बी इन एजुकेटेड हेल्प द न्यू जेनेरेशन टू नो अबाउट दिस फिनोम आप लिखो आपू लेने हेला हो भेदभाव करना सीखते जाने सामजिकीकरण होने We should defend our rights. We should be in in every, in every manifestation. Pulai le saan olai bani bus dinu pario, ai na? Ani sabi jana ek jut pa. Rolai ke bande ki sabi saman hona saksa. Gari baru, pasadi baje karu, dali taru. Unir ka jane mudda haru lai jane. Unir koi bahasa ma mu sunne, ra unir koi bahasa ma busne ra. Unir koi aadhar ma jay kanun banana ra gari bande ho bani samajhi ru pantaan sambab cha. The European Union ambassador to Nepal, Veronica Lorenzo, said that efforts are underway to secure participation of EU countries in the investment summit, which is scheduled to be held next month. Lorenzo said that the European Union is willing to provide additional support to Nepal for its financial progress. Addressing the press meet organized on the occasion of 50 years of diplomatic relations between Nepal and the European Union, Ambassador Lorenzo said that the EU will support Nepal to uplift the economy as both are firmly rooted in the principle of peace and democracy. Mobilize internal investment and to attract foreign direct investment. And so what we the way we're looking at the future to continue supporting Nepal in those objectives doesn't still fits within uh, within our priorities. Um, but we we'll will have more attention to these to these challenges that the government itself is identifying. I've talked about foreign direct investors we we see our role also as trying to attract european investment very much so she said that it has not been long since nepal implemented federalism and that it could be further strengthened time now for our segment public pulse where you text us with your opinion Public polls. Before that, let's take a look at the result from yesterday's poll. Yesterday, we had asked why are discussions on the way to change the name of Mao Center. Forty-one percent voted for A, ideological deviation. Forty-five percent for B, attempt to win public support, and fourteen percent for C, paving way for unity. And yesterday's question. Why have disputes persisted between all three tiers of the government on the distribution of revenue from natural resources? Your options are A, legal complication, B, center being overpowering, and C, problem in categorization of the resources. Voting is on. Type any WS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to three four double zero one to share your opinion with us. Time now for international update. India's top court has struck down a scheme that allowed people to make anonymous donations to political parties calling it unconstitutional. Electoral bonds were launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government in 2018 to make political funding more transparent. But critics say it's done the opposite and made the process more opaque. 
Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party has received most of the funds through the bonds. The scheme was challenged in the Supreme Court as a distortion of democracy. Today, a five-judge constitution bench ruled that electoral bonds violate citizens' rights to access information held by the government. The court directed the government-run State Bank of India, SBI, to not issue any more such bonds, to provide identity details of those who bought them and to give information about bonds redeemed by each political party to the election commission within a week. These interest-free time-limited bonds are issued in fixed denominations 1,000 to 10 million rupees and can be purchased from a state-owned bank during specific periods of time through the year. Citizens and firms can donate them to political parties without revealing their identities. Only registered political parties who have also secured not less than 1% of the votes polled in the last election to the parliament or a state assembly can receive the bonds, which they have to cash them within 15 days. We have more news coming up, but right now it's time for another short break. Sports News. Nepal has lost its first match under the ICC Cricket World Cup League 2 Triangular ODI Series. Namibia defeated Nepal by four wickets. This is the first time the national team faced a defeat in ODI at home ground under the leadership of Monty Desai. Captain Gerald Erasmus claimed five wickets in Namibia's win. In the match held in TU Cricket Ground in Ketipur, Namibia won the toss and chose to field first. Host Nepal had the worst possible start as they lost opener Kushal Bhutel on the first ball of the match and were reduced to 21 runs for the loss of four wickets in 9.3 overs. Anil Shah was the second wicket to fall, followed by Asif Sheikh and skipper Rohit Baudil. None of them scored in double digit. Nepal went all out for 132 runs in 41.1 overs. This was also Nepal's lowest total at home ground in ODI cricket so far. Bhim Sarki was the highest scorer for Nepal with 44 runs. Gulshan Jha contributed 21 runs. Karan Kesi chipped in 16 and Kushal Malla 15. Gerard Erasmus was the pick of the Namibia bowlers claiming five wickets. Ruben Trumpelman and 18-year-old debutant Jack Brussel claimed two wickets each. Jan Nicole Lofty Eaton claimed one wicket for Namibia. Chasing a victory target of 133 runs, Namibia scored 134 in 33.1 overs, losing six wickets. Opener Nicholas Daven went out for 15 runs and Mikhail van Lingen for 23 runs. Captain Gerard Erasmus returned to the pavilion, collecting just eight runs. Likewise, JJ Smith remained not out at 17 runs. Towards bowling, Sompal Kami claimed three wickets, Lalit Rajbangsi two and Rohit Powdell one. With the win, Namibia have back two points. The Pal will next play against the Netherlands on Saturday. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.